So the question was about uh, the day in the life of a playwright as the play is getting yeah, produced. Um, well, Mor Morwen just said it's all crying, and I think there's are, there are a lot of tears. I always have to cry at least once. Um, uh, it's stressful. I find I'm not a very good, I'm not a very optimistic person. I usually think the worst of everything is going to happen. So truthfully, I'm very pessimistic. Nobody's going to like this. Everybody's going to hate this. That's sometimes how I go in. I work very hard not to be like that because I don't think that's a productive way of thinking. But it's challenging to um, get out of that mindset. Um, I don't know. I think, I think what I would say is that I would hope that in the future I could enjoy the opportunity to actually have a piece of work produced. I would love to enjoy that. So less than um, what the day in the life is, as I wish that future days would be more enjoyable, that I would be able to actually enjoy the process and the opportunity to have something produced and see it on stage, as opposed to being stressed all the time. It's hard because you've already written it and you have an idea in your mind of how it should be. And, but everyone else has to do their work and you have to watch them do their work. And then once you're actually finished the work of all the writing, and if you're you know, making tweaks or changing, I feel like once that work is done, I have nothing to do except worry. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's so stressful. And feel bad about everything that happens. Feel bad about everything. And days are going to be good and bad for the actors in rehearsal, and the process will fall apart and come back together. But it's for you, as a not an active participant, it's unbelievably stressful. Because all you see is the pessimistic vision of this future train like going down the road to ruin. And, and it's not what's happening, but it's what's happening in your mind. And I remember after having a play produced, my second play, I lay on the floor of the Tarragon Theater during a preview with my hood over my head as the play was happening, and it was not going badly. Lying there, saying out loud, no, no, <laughs> whenever anything didn't go exactly as I thought it should go. <laughs> like, like I, and afterwards I changed and got better. But it was like, but I, that's how I felt. But it, but it wasn't going like that. It was exactly yeah. what you're saying. W were you in the theater? Yes, I was in okay. the house. Okay. I was in the theater. I was at the top of the house. So, but yeah, I was there. People could hear me. Sometimes I feel like <laughs> you need to do that out loud. I'm like, what's happening? Like, I, I can't. Like, I'm try. I try to really hard to be a good playwright. To be like, <laughs> I understand. This is the first time you've read the script. I understand. <laughs> I understand. Just do your best. Like, just just read it. Just follow the punctuation. I'm like, here, but then really, you. like yeah. inside, I'm like, I can't understand why you don't understand that. I made it so clear. Like, I'm, 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 I'm a, like inside. I'm, I'm just. I've always been kicked out of rehearsal. At a certain point, I just get kicked out. Someone says I can't work with her in the room. But logistically, you start off each of you being in the rehearsal hall mm -hmm. for the whole rehearsal day. No. no, no. Oh. Or. No. No. Uh, well, for a little digression. I mean, um, it is a wonderful collaborative process. <laughs> um, it is. It is. And, if, and writers aren't necessarily born to be collaborators. So, and because they've had a head start on the project, um, it's really hard, uh, as Lisa was saying, to go, well, I've been working on this for th three years. Why aren't you where I am? Um, but but um, j just to make a, a political aside, because I, I was, uh, I believe, a significant part of, of the forming of the Guild of Canadian Playwrights at the time. And the end result is theater is, I believe, the only performing arts medium where it, it still belongs to the writer. Uh, theoretically and contractually, um, a, a producer cannot or director or actor cannot change a word without permission, cannot f cast really without at least consultation. Um, and I feel badly on behalf of young playwrights who are really anxious to get that first production where producers will do anything to this script um, and, and really bo a kind of a disrespect. So. Step one is to at least know it's your piece, and it's really nice that they've decided to produce it, um, but it's my, my play. Um, first days are awful, mostly, because the actors don't really want to give anything because they don't want to look foolish, and they're, they're just new to it. And you're sitting there hearing words you've worked on for three years turn to oatmeal. And that's a horrible experience. It's like, 
oh, it's as bad as I thought it was. Yeah. Um, often in public, often there's an audience for that first read through too, which is a, like really crazy. And yeah. you just, it, like everything snowballs, right? Like if something happens, like if, if the house is small, it's my fault. Like, you know what I mean? I start taking all the hits for the theaters publicity or you know what I mean anything like everything is my fault I feel like the buck stops with me which is not necessarily true but um, all of those feelings sort of uh, surface that like this is all my fault but on, on, the, on the other side of it um, I love it when I see the actors take control I love it when I get to see that it's actually what they're doing is better than what I would have that's done. the most thrilling thing yeah. in the world mm -hmm. the most thrilling thing one of my favorite moments was at um, Stratford first read through it was the two principal actors on this side of the table and the director and I on this side of the table and one of the actors saying okay okay don't expect anything from me you know it's a, just a first read yes we know it's just a first read we don't expect anything and 30 seconds into it he got caught up in the play and that was the most exciting moment I ever had other than my debut um, I was, a, again, I was a bum. I wandered into a library theater, thought, oh, this is interesting. Got actually cast in a play, and I really, I, I cannot act. And the, my character had a 10 second monologue at the end of act one, and I started stretching it. Uh, and the director really liked it, so it became a 10 minute monologue at, at the end of act one. I, I have no idea if it had anything to do with the play or not. but then. <laughs> Um, there was a, a, a festival of one-act plays at the Toronto Learning Research Center where this thing was happening. I thought, gee, I wonder if I could write one of these. And so I wrote a one-act play, and I remember going to the, th to the library that night to see it and going, this is the dumbest thing I have ever done. I am about to be humiliated. Thank God it's strangers. They don't know who I am, and I'll be able to fade into the night. Um, and then the first play went on and I hated it and then they went out for an intermission. They had coffee, they were talking, come on, just do the play. And, and my play come on, came on and they started laughing. I mean, fortunately it was a, it was a comedy. And, <laughs> and I thought, wow, I felt like Sally Field, oh, they liked me. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of the evening they had a talk back session and this middle-aged woman raised her hand and said to me, does your mother know you wrote this? And I said, well, no, she doesn't. And she said, well, she'd be proud. And that was the best review I've ever had. But believe me, on the walk over, I thought, man, you have done the dumbest thing you've ever done. That's why it's good to kind of write notes to yourself. I always try, I don't, sometimes I'm not very good at it, but I try to write a note to myself when something's okay, so I can review it later, because I feel like I have a bad case of amnesia all the time. <laughs> Selective. Like, Selective, yeah, like I'm like, this is the worst thing, this has never happened before, this is horrible. And if you can kind of look at that note and go, oh right, yes, I have felt exactly this way and I have yeah. been this stressed out, I can know that this has happened before and somehow I came out of it, so maybe I need to calm down. Theater Calgary handles this situation the best. Um, they have a room behind the audience, glass enclosed. Um, and the director and playwright can sit in that room, Hi. scream, drink, <laughs> pirouette, whatever. Because um, it's one thing for the actors to be nervous. They can use that energy, but you get nervous and you can't do a thing with it other than get nauseous. And it's, it's just not a... I mean, the great New York thing is you go to the... A bar at Sardi's during the play, and you come back at the end of it. But um, yeah, and some of the some of the Ryerson students who have created pieces that they aren't in re realize that oh my God, this is the worst thing ever to have to sit and watch it and not be able to do anything. Yeah. You can't sit in the house. You should never sit in the house for opening night. I like to sit. I used to like. I used to find a stairwell where you could sit with a drink but hear the play. And by hearing the play, you know how it's going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Completely, you can hear the audience, you can hear the play. To give your energy to the actors. No. It's gonna be like. You just have to hide away, but you need to hear it so you know how it's going. 